most of the time when ever someone asks me how long I've been playing the guitar, I respond only half jokingly with too long to be this bad. Who doesn't love a bit of self-deprecation, right? But when it comes to looking back at over 20 years learning the guitar, I'd be lying if I said there wasn't a part of me that wished I could start all over again and have someone tell me what I know now after thousands of hours practicing. Most regrettably, not gonna happen, I'm afraid, but perhaps the consolation is that beginners out there will be able to benefit from my mistakes. So pay close attention because you're about to learn how everything from the Goldilocks principle to taking a shot has the power to transform your playing. Let's do this. Oh, and be sure to watch to the end because believe me, you won't regret it. Hello and welcome to my channel. This is Guitar With Bob, the home of all things related to the guitar here on YouTube. From power chords and pickups to arpeggios and alternate tunings, you'll find it here. So sit tight, grab yourself a guitar and let's play. And if you're new to the channel, please do consider subscribing because you can't spell guitar without you and I. Did I mention there are also free cheesy jokes thrown in? All right, let's get to it. Keep your practice routine fun dynamic and engaging. If the material is too easy, you might find yourself becoming overly complacent with your level. On the other hand, if it's too difficult or you set your expectations too high, then you'll be disheartened. So aim for balanced practice sessions that are varied and encompass a number of different skills. A teacher should be able to keep you on track, but if you're learning on your own, why not search for something a little bit different, like beginner finger exercises for a guitar on YouTube, for example. Maybe not the most earth shatteringly exciting content, but it'll change up your routine and it could be just the sort of challenge you need right now. You should also consider graded music exams for the guitar. They're certainly not for everyone. Personally, I haven't taken any yet, at least when it comes to the guitar. But there's a lot to be said for taking a more streamlined approach to mastering an instrument. Sure, exams can be a great way of killing a love of pretty much anything in life, but what's to say it won't be the perfect fit for you? If you're a bit further on down the road, there's also trying out a different guitar for a change, like a nice on if you're a steel string player or an electric for example. Maybe stay away from the 18 to 20 string harp guitars for now. There's plenty of time in the future to explore scalloped, fanned and even squiggly frets. Yes, that is a thing. To your heart's content. For now though, the focus is balance. Get gear that you enjoy playing whether it's a top-of-the-line custom shop on special order or a mini Hello Kitty guitar in bright pink, not recommended. It isn't the price of a guitar that matters, but how much it inspires you to play. While it's probably still best to avoid the cheapest guitar on Amazon, there are plenty of affordable beginner guitars out there just waiting for the right owner. They also don't need to be Fender, Gibson or Martins, by the way. If guitar virtuosos like Prince, Derek Trucks, Eddie Van Halen and Kirk Hammett, I could go on, have rocked cheap Strat or Tele imitation models, then surely the perfect budget guitar is out there for everyone. The trick is ideally in person to try out as many different guitars as possible. Okay, this may be a little easier said than done if you're a beginner and you don't know where to start, but look for unbiased advice from friends or a local guitar teacher. Take a look at entry to mid-level models on Thoman's website, for example. You'll find electric, classical, acoustic, and travel guitars. It's easy to get overwhelmed, but the idea is just to browse through the guitars to get an idea of the many different types that are available. Hopefully after some research, you'll know more about what you're looking for. Don't miss their top sellers because they tend to be top sellers for a reason. And if you want the very best deal, but don't mind your guitar not being factory fresh, then check out their B stock products. Lastly, if you're set on an electric, Coleman also has a guitar lab section that's worth checking out to help you find the guitar for you. Simply pick a shape that you like, specify a matching reference, choose a color and you can whittle down the search results even more by selecting the preferred user review, price frame and manufacturer. Pretty cool. Never keep your guitar in a case or 
cover it unless absolutely necessary. If it's tucked away somewhere safe and out of view, then that's exactly where it'll stay. Keep it in plain sight as much as possible, in your sitting room, at work, wherever, just as long as you're likely to see it more often and be reminded to pick it up. Which brings me nicely to number four. Get a wall hanger just like this one. You can pick these up for around six euro or seven US dollars on Amazon or Thoma. They're convenient, they look cool, and most importantly, they'll get you playing more. Alternatively, if you prefer a less permanent fixture or the guitar wall mount just isn't your thing, a guitar stand or rack is the next best option. Keep in mind they do tend to be a little bit more expensive, less stable, require more cleaning and generally just eyesores. Other than that, they're great however. I've no doubt that for many beginners getting a guitar hanger or a stand will feel a bit like overkill. Can't you just keep the guitar on the floor or lean it upright on the couch in a way that ensures it will almost certainly be unstable and fall over? This to me is the rhetorical equivalent of increasing the tension on a string by slowly turning the machine head and expecting the string won't eventually break. It will. If you want to become a guitarist, then you should take care of your guitars, plain and simple. Take pride in the artistry that's gone into building it, even if there hasn't been much artistry. Keep them in good condition and they'll serve you well. Make yourself accountable to others. Sign up to weekly guitar lessons. Go to an open mic night or a guitar meetup. Start a band or announce to your friends and family that you're learning the guitar. Join communities on social media and post videos of your progress to keep you motivated. One website I'd strongly recommend if you're not already familiar with is ultimateguitar.com. Not only have they a catalogue of over a million songs, largely for free, but it's a great learning resource resource for players of all levels and their guitar community is really second to none. You'll find core tabs, backing tracks, articles and forums. But from a beginner's perspective, probably best of all is a section they call shots. In their own words, shots are an online version of an open mic. It's a great opportunity to perform your favorite song to millions of music fans around the globe. If you don't feel ready to perform just yet, you can always use shots to track your learning progress, meet other like-minded beginner musicians, take playing tips from the experienced members of the community and discover new awesome songs. How cool is that? Shots can be both public and private. So if you're more camera shy or you just want a little more time to perfect your playing, then use these 30 second videos as a constant source of inspiration because it's only when we look back that we can see how far we've come. Once you feel you're ready, why not give it a shot? And there you have it. Before I wrap this thing up, however, it's time for question of the day. Did any of the suggestions surprise you? What advice would you give to fellow beginners, to the more seasoned players out there? What do you wish you knew as a beginner guitar player? Post your responses below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. There's no perfect way to learn the guitar. Sure, it's easy to look back and say, I should have done this or that. If I'm being honest, I've very few memories of first playing the guitar. I remember learning on an instrument that was way too small for my hands. I remember me and my sister trying to play acoustic guitar behind our necks before a lesson. There's a reason you usually only see guitars do this with electric guitars, by the way, and not acoustic guitars, because the size of the body makes it particularly difficult. Try it. But I rarely, if ever, associate the guitar with any feeling of regret. Do I think if I applied the tips in this video, I'd be a better guitarist today? Absolutely. If for whatever reason, though, I somehow had the chance to communicate with a fresh-faced, naive little version of me who was about to pick up a guitar for the very first time, limited to only three words, what's the best advice I could give? Buy some Bitcoin. If that advice was specifically related to the guitar, however, I'd simply say, just keep playing. You've been watching Guitar with Bob, but now guys, it's playtime. See you in the next one.